AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. No one with AIDS has been cured. AIDS is now the leading cause of death among young people in this country. In 1981, a mysterious illness began to claim lives, initially among gay men. As cases multiplied, fear and stigma surrounding the condition grew. Magic Johnson confirmed today that he has the AIDS virus. The HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. The cause remained unknown until scientists identified the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, as the culprit behind what became known as the AIDS epidemic. Do you got any effects? Is that what it's all about? If I knew all the facts, maybe I wouldn't be here. In the early 1980s, Doctors in Los Angeles and New York began to notice a strange phenomenon among their patients, particularly young, previously healthy gay men. They were being diagnosed with rare lung infections, cancers, and other illnesses that typically only affected people with compromised immune systems. As more cases emerged, it became clear that this was not an isolated event, but rather a new, unknown disease. The lifestyle of some male homo has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. But it... The first official report of what would later be known as AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, came on June 5, 1981, when the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, published a report about five young gay men in Los Angeles who had contracted pneumocystis carinii pneumonia, a rare lung infection. Shortly after, more reports surfaced of gay men developing a rare skin cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma. As the number of cases continued to rise, so did the public's fear and speculation about the cause of this mysterious illness. Many theories circulated, but the most prominent and persistent was that it was somehow related to the gay lifestyle or practices. This assumption led to significant stigma and discrimination against the LGBTQ community. The media initially referred to AIDS as GRID, or gay-related immune deficiency, further reinforcing the notion that it was a gay disease. This misconception had severe consequences for the gay community, who faced not only the devastating effects of the illness, but also societal blame and ostracism. However, as the epidemic progressed, it became evident that AIDS was not limited to the gay population. Intravenous drug users, Hemophiliacs and Haitian immigrants also began to present with similar symptoms, leading to the eventual understanding that the disease was caused by a blood-borne pathogen and could affect anyone, regardless of orientation, identifying the cause of AIDS. As the AIDS epidemic continued to spread in the early 1980s, scientists worldwide raced to identify the cause of this devastating disease. The search was complicated by the fact that AIDS appeared to be a complex syndrome with a wide range of symptoms, affecting multiple organ systems. A breakthrough came in 1983 when a team of researchers at the Pasteur Institute in France, led by Françoise Barré-Sinoussi and Luc Montagnier, isolated a new retrovirus from the lymph node of a patient with AIDS-related symptoms. They named this virus lymphadenopathy-associated virus, LAVI and published their findings in the journal Science in May 1983. Around the same time, a team led by American scientist Robert Gallo at the National Cancer Institute also isolated a virus from AIDS patients, which they named human T-cell lymphotropic virus type 3, HTLV3. Initially, there was some confusion and competition between the two teams, but it soon became clear that LAIV and HTLV3 were actually the same virus now known as the Human Immunodeficiency Virus, HIV. Further research revealed that HIV specifically targeted the immune system's CD4 plus T cells, gradually depleting them and rendering the body vulnerable to opportunistic infections and cancers. Infection was the discovery of the first human retrovirus, the leukemia virus, HTLV1, because it was one of the first viruses shown to be the cause of a cancer. This discovery provided a crucial explanation for the wide range of symptoms observed in AIDS patients. The identification of HIV as the causative agent of AIDS was a significant milestone in the fight against the epidemic. It allowed for the development of diagnostic tests to identify infected individuals and paved the way for research into potential treatments and vaccines. Barre Sinoussi and Montagnier's contributions to the discovery of HIV were widely recognized 
and they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2008 for their groundbreaking work. Their research laid the foundation for the development of antiretroviral drugs that have transformed HIV AIDS from a death sentence to a manageable chronic condition for many people living with the virus. The Origins and Spread of HIV As scientists worked to understand the biology of HIV, another question loomed. Where did this virus come from, and how did it spread so rapidly across the globe? Researchers have proposed several theories about the origins of HIV and its introduction into the human population. The most widely accepted theory suggests that HIV originated in non-human primates, specifically chimpanzees and gorillas in West and Central Africa. These animals are known to carry simian immunodeficiency viruses, SIVs, which are closely related to HIV. Scientists believe that HIV-1, the most common strain of the virus, likely emerged from the transmission of SIV-CPZ, found in chimpanzees, to humans, while HIV-2, a less prevalent strain, originated from CVSMM, found in sooty mangabe monkeys. The initial transmission from animals to humans, known as zoonosis, is thought to have occurred through hunting, butchering, or consuming the meat of infected primates. This spillover event likely took place in the early 20th century in the region that is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo. From this initial introduction, HIV began to spread within human populations in Africa, aided by factors such as urbanization, promiscuity, and the reuse of unsterilized needles in healthcare settings. By the 1960s and 1970s, the virus had established itself in several African countries, although it remained largely undetected due to limited medical infrastructure and the similarity of AIDS symptoms to other endemic diseases. The global spread of HIV can be attributed to increased international travel and migration in the latter half of the 20th century. The virus likely made its way to the Caribbean region and the United States through travel and immigration from Africa, particularly Haiti. In the U.S., the virus found a foothold in the gay community, where it spread rapidly due to a combination of factors, including practices, intravenous and a lack of awareness about the disease. From the U.S. and the Caribbean, HIV spread to other parts of the world, including Europe, Asia, and Latin America. The globalization of the epidemic was facilitated by international travel, tourism, trade. By the mid-1980 ES, cases of AIDS had been reported in nearly every country, marking the beginning of a true global pandemic. Understanding the origins and spread of HIV has been crucial for developing strategies to combat the epidemic. This knowledge has informed public health campaigns, risk reduction strategies, and the development of targeted interventions for high-risk populations. Despite progress in treatment and prevention, HIV continues to pose a significant global health challenge with millions of people infected worldwide and no effective vaccine or cure yet available. Stigma, discrimination, and notable cases. From the early days of the AIDS epidemic, the disease was accompanied by a profound sense of stigma and discrimination. Much of this was rooted in the fact that HIV AIDS was initially associated with marginalized groups, particularly the LGBTQ community, intravenous drug users, workers, the gay community, which was among the hardest hit by the epidemic in the U.S., faced significant backlash and blame. Many people, influenced by pre-existing prejudices and a lack of understanding about the disease, saw AIDS as a gay plague and a punishment for what they considered to be an immoral lifestyle. This stigma led to widespread discrimination, including job termination, eviction, and even violence against those perceived to be infected with HIV. The fear and misinformation surrounding AIDS also led to the ostracization of other affected groups, such as Haitians and hemophiliacs. Haitians were stigmatized due to the high prevalence of HIV in their community, while hemophiliacs faced discrimination because many contracted the virus through contaminated blood products. One of the most notable cases that helped to change public perceptions of HIV AIDS was that of Ryan White a teenager from Indiana who contracted HIV through a blood transfusion. White faced significant discrimination in his community, being barred from attending school and facing threats of violence. My family and I held no hatred for those people because 
who realize they are victims, victims of their own ignorance. However, he and his family fought back against this discrimination, ultimately leading to the Ryan White Comprehensive AIDS Resources Emergency, CARE Act, which provided federal funding for HIV AIDS treatment and support services. Other high-profile cases also helped to shift public opinion and reduce stigma. In 1991, NBA star Magic Johnson announced that he had contracted HIV, challenging the notion that the disease only affected certain marginalized groups. The HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. Similarly, the death of Queen lead singer Freddie Mercury from AIDS-related complications in 1991 brought renewed attention to the epidemic and the need for greater compassion and understanding. Despite these efforts, stigma and discrimination persisted throughout the epidemic, often fueled by misinformation, fear, and prejudice. Many people living with HIV AIDS continued to face challenges in accessing health care, employment, and social support, particularly in communities where the disease was heavily stigmatized. Over time, public health campaigns, educational efforts, and the tireless work of activists and advocates have helped to reduce stigma and improve the lives of those affected by HIV AIDS. However, the fight against discrimination is ongoing, and efforts to combat stigma remain a critical component of the global response to the epidemic, advances in HIV AIDS treatment. Since the identification of HIV as the cause of AIDS, scientists have worked tirelessly to develop effective treatments to manage the virus and improve the lives of those affected. The early years of the epidemic were marked by a lack of effective treatments, and a diagnosis of HIV AIDS was essentially a death sentence. However, the development of antiretroviral drugs, ARVs, in the mid-1990s marked a turning point in the fight against HIV AIDS. Antiretroviral drugs work by targeting different stages of the HIV life cycle, preventing the virus from replicating and reducing the viral load in the body. The first ARV, Zidovudine, AZT, was approved by the FDA in 1987, but it had limited efficacy when used alone and caused significant side effects. The real breakthrough came in 1996 with the introduction of highly active antiretroviral therapy, HART, which involved combining multiple ARVs to create a more potent and durable treatment regimen. HART was shown to dramatically reduce the viral load in HIV-positive individuals, allowing their immune systems to recover and preventing the onset of AIDS-related illnesses. As ARVs became more widely available and treatment regimens were refined, the prognosis for people living with HIV AIDS improved significantly. With consistent adherence to treatment, many HIV positive individuals are now able to achieve an undetectable viral load, meaning that the virus is suppressed to such low levels that it cannot be detected by standard tests. This not only improves their health outcomes, but also greatly reduces the risk of transmitting the virus to others. In addition to improving health outcomes, advances in HIV AIDS treatment have also led to significant improvements in the quality of life for people living with the virus. With effective treatment, many HIV positive individuals are able to lead long, healthy lives, pursuing careers, relationships, and personal goals that may have seemed impossible in the early days of the epidemic. Maybe we got effects. So that's what it's all about. If I knew all the effects, maybe I wouldn't be here. Despite these advances, challenges remain in ensuring access to HIV AIDS treatment for all who need it, particularly in low- and middle-income countries where healthcare infrastructure and resources may be limited. The development of long-acting injectable ARVs and other innovative treatment options may help to address some of these challenges by reducing the burden of daily pill-taking and improving treatment adherence, the current state of the HIV AIDS epidemic. Nearly four decades after the first cases of AIDS were reported, the HIV AIDS epidemic remains a significant global health challenge. According to the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, UNAIDS, as of 2020, an estimated 37.7 million people worldwide were living with HIV, including 1.7 million children. Despite progress in prevention and treatment, the epidemic continues to disproportionately affect certain regions and populations. Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, is the most heavily affected region 
accounting for more than two-thirds of all people living with HIV worldwide. The epidemic also has a significant impact on key populations, such as men who with men, transgender people, workers, and people who inject who often face barriers to accessing prevention and treatment services due to stigma, discrimination, and criminalization. One of the most significant remaining challenges in the fight against HIV AIDS is expanding access to testing, prevention, and treatment services, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. While the availability of antiretroviral therapy has increased dramatically in recent years, many people living with HIV still do not have access to the life-saving medications they need. In 2020, only 73% of adults and 54% of children living with HIV were receiving antiretroviral therapy. Prevention efforts also face ongoing challenges, particularly in reaching key populations and addressing the social and structural factors that increase vulnerability to HIV. While new prevention tools, such as pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, and voluntary medical male circumcision, have shown promise in reducing HIV transmission, uptake remains low in many settings. Stigma and discrimination also continue to pose significant barriers to the HIV AIDS response. Despite progress in public understanding of the epidemic, people living with HIV still face high levels of stigma in many communities, which can discourage them from seeking testing, treatment, and support services. Criminalization of key populations, such as workers and people who use drugs, also perpetuates stigma and hinders access to HIV services. To address these challenges, the global HIV AIDS response must continue to prioritize evidence-based prevention and treatment strategies, while also working to address the social and structural determinants of health that fuel the epidemic. This will require sustained political commitment, increased funding, and the meaningful engagement of affected communities in the design and implementation of HIV AIDS programs, the social and economic impact of HIV AIDS. The HIV AIDS epidemic has had far-reaching social and economic consequences that extend beyond the direct impact on individual health. From the household level to the global scale, the epidemic has affected families, communities, and entire nations in complex and interconnected ways. At the household level, HIV AIDS has exacted a heavy toll on families and communities. When a family member becomes ill or dies from AIDS-related complications, it can lead to lost income, increased healthcare expenses, and the emotional trauma of caring for sick loved ones. Children may be forced to drop out of school to care for ill parents or to work to support their families, perpetuating cycles of poverty and limiting their future opportunities. The impact of HIV AIDS on communities has been particularly severe in regions with high HIV prevalence, such as Sub-Saharan Africa. In some hard-hit communities, the epidemic has led to the breakdown of social networks and traditional support systems, as well as the loss of key community leaders and skilled workers. The strain on healthcare systems and other social services has also been immense, as communities struggle to cope with the burden of HIV AIDS, while also addressing other health and development challenges. At the national level, the HIV AIDS epidemic has had significant economic consequences, particularly for countries with high HIV prevalence. The loss of young adults in their prime working years has led to reduced productivity, lower economic growth, and increased healthcare costs. In some countries, the epidemic has also contributed to food insecurity and other development challenges, as households and communities struggle to cope with the impact of HIV AIDS. The global economic impact of HIV AIDS has also been substantial, According to a 2015 study by the World Bank, the epidemic had already cost the global economy an estimated $1.4 trillion in lost economic growth since 2000, with the potential for even greater losses in the future if the epidemic is not effectively addressed. Efforts to mitigate the social and economic impact of HIV AIDS have been a key component of the global response to the epidemic. This has included initiatives to support affected households and communities, such as cash transfer programs and community-based support services, as well as efforts to strengthen healthcare systems and address the underlying social and economic determinants of HIV vulnerability.